Yeah. A very good evening. You're watching India Today. I'm Nabila Jamal. A quick roundup on the day's news. Um, let me quickly start with this uh, controversy raging on over filmmaker, who's a Tamil filmmaker, Lena Mani Mekalai. She's basically Tamilian by origin, but otherwise uh, is in Toronto right now. So, uh, yeah, there's much outrage over one of her movie posters. Basically, she's released a documentary film where she, she's released it abro abroad um, uh, in Toronto and basically that documentary film's poster has goddess Kali smoking a cigarette and uh, there's also an LGBT flag behind etc but uh, w the outrage is over goddess Kali smoking the cigarette and you know trying to show her in bad light so huge outrage on social media especially Hindutva groups uh, who are slamming her wanting for an FIR against her. Now, one would see the environment which is already vicious. At this point, we saw what Nupur Sharma said about Prophet Muhammad, which created huge outrage and, you know, some of them taking law into their own hands, which again is not justified. But when you see an environment which is so vicious uh, and, and so grim, at a point like this, any kind of religious remark can really spark things off. And Lena's poster coming right at this point, at this time when we're seeing enraged, inflamed emotions across India is obviously a question on, on her intent, whether she really thought that this was really free speech or, or, or that none should question her uh, levels of creativity, etc. Uh, did she not know or not anticipate this kind of outrage and backlash? She sure would have, because looking at the environment in India at this point today, the beheading that happened in, uh, Udaip in Udaipur, the, the man was murdered in Amravati. At a time like this, if she's going to come out with a poster of Ma Kali uh, smoking a cigarette, it's bound to receive huge outrage and condemnation. So clearly, on one hand, we know that Lena must have surely anticipated this backlash and she, she still went ahead to release that poster uh, in Toronto. M merely looks to me as if this was a publicity stunt. That she knows, first of all, she's away from India, she's not in India. Uh, the entire country will be talking about it, India will now be talking about it. And as evidently, the people are talking about that film and when it's going to be released, that, that it should be banned, etc. And now when the con country like India with our population going to be talking about it extensively and then we want to go watch that film, clearly it's going to give her huge hits. She's possibly looking to rake in that kind of viewership uh, and publicize her film uh, through a controversy like this because she knows that this is one topic, anything to do with religion in India that, that usually is not tolerated if it's unpleasant. So uh, we're seeing that Lena is right now in quite a soup. When I say soup, of course, in, on social media, since she is in Toronto, I don't think that our uh, police here in Delhi, where the FIR has been filed, will really go reach out there. But then if she does do, she does plan to come to India at any point, then she will have to face a case, an FIR that's on her name. Uh, but yeah, this is the uh, this is a poster that she's put out and when she's been condemned heavily, uh, she's in fact come out to, uh, to defend herself. She says, uh, first of all, she's, she's, she spoke about how thrilled she is that this movie is being released. She and her team are super excited, et cetera, et cetera. And this, this, this movie poster was released as part of a larger, <clears throat> a global film fair um, as such uh, uh, at the Aga Khan Museum. Um, not a film fair, but basically a gallery where they're launching documentaries and they, they just p uh, drop a mention there so that, you know, people go in and watch. So this movie also, a poster was released at the Aga Khan Museum in Toronto so that uh, the word spreads. This is your way of publicizing it. But then again, the question on Ma Kali smoking a cigarette, did you not expect that you'll receive such huge outrage? Of course you would. Now, uh, obviously at this point, Hindutva groups, specifically uh, conservative Hindus at this point, uh, who are asking several questions and very valid questions. Will, will Lena have the courage to ever put out an image like this of uh, Mother Mary of Christianity? or uh, of uh, Khadija or Aisha of Islam, will, will, will there be, will Lena ever dare to do something like that? Trying to provoke a, a god of another religion. Of course, these questions were again expected because at this point uh, we know if you even raise a finger or say anything against certain religions, uh, there's huge outrage and, and the backlash is, that, that backlash could be deadly as well. And again, case in point here, Udaipur beheading. Uh, Nupur Sharma said what she said about Prophet Muhammad. A man merely supported Nupur Sharma for what she said and he had his throat slit. So these are extreme uh, extremists in, in religions like in Islam. 
uh, and and of course people are very cautious because of the kind of fatal end that one meets and again not justified but the point is that uh, you you have islamists who take law into their own hands and can do anything if you point a finger at the, uh, the religion or prophet muhammad um, so so the question is and of course hindutva groups asking that you have you so brazenly you know poke jokes and make fun at uh, hindu gods do you have the courage to do the same for muslims uh, and their uh, uh, religious personalities like aisha or khadija would you ever do that would you ever dare to uh, poke fun at uh, mother mary you know these are the questions being asked evidently so so uh, you know maybe because uh, and and of course uh, hindutva group saying that maybe because hinduism and hindus are so tolerant all these years that you have all, you've taken all the liberty to uh, you know to poke fun at us and our gods and now enough is enough gone are those days we will not keep quiet we will also uh, stand our ground and you know save our culture and our religion so yeah hindus are of, of course very upset and and it, it, one should really think before especially in an environment like this you should think very well and very hard before you put out something uh, as controversial as ma kali smoking a cigarette i mean that's of all things that would have attracted huge outrage and rightly so all right so um, uh, here from what we know that lena has uh, put up her views on uh, social media saying that <clears throat> i i am i stick by what it is uh, i stand by free speech and uh, even if that means i have to face death i will this is exactly what she says so she says that i uh, if this means if standing by free speech and free voice she says free voice on her social media platform she says if standing by free free voice means that i have to you know it's a threat to life for me then i'm willing to take that threat i am will, willing to face that threat that's what she says so well the film remo uh, as per her comments itself the film revolves around the events of goddess kali uh, or or a woman who's dressed in the attire of kali who appears to be kali she takes a stroll on the streets of toronto and then um, and then lights up a cigarette that's what uh that that's what's the context uh, that she's given she says there's a lot more layers to the film if you watch the film you'll love it in fact all that hashtag that you're trending now saying uh, uh, arrest lena money maker lai uh, that will turn into hashtag love you lena money maker lai that's her version of it so it really looks very scripted as if she knew very well that there would be outrage and she was very prepared to embrace it and say what she had to say so yeah the film right now is a documentary it's going to be released in toronto not sure if it have it will have or see the light of day in india but at this point doesn't seem like any uh, any of the hindutva groups who are currently so outraged and if i look complain against her would even allow a film of that nature with a poster like this to be released and and across religions it's it's rather it's fair only to ask for for people to respect one another's religion it's not it's not something that you're asking out of the ordinary for 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 eons centuries people have been so uh, sensitive when it comes to their religion their god so if anything the least you can do is to show respect if this is creativity then one keeps saying and harping time and again find different forms of creativity why do you have to hurt someone's uh, religion and you know choices and and make that your creative look like your creative freedom i mean you know uh, there's there's a real distinction to that and at this point with the vicious environment in india when emotions are so charged one can only imagine that this is only adding fuel to the fire a quick word on uh, the maharashtra trust vote finally we're looking at uh, eknath shinde who is now the chief minister of maharashtra deputy chief minister devendra fadnavis so a comfortable majority 164 votes that eknath shinde got so it it was a great day for him in fact what was all the more embarrassing for udhav thakre was that uh, two of the mlas last minute two of udhav thakre's mlas the last minute ditched udhav thakre and joined eknath shinde right before the trust vote so what does this mean it means that they they're obviously looking at brighter prospects and future for themselves with eknath shinde and the bjp at this point so yeah eknath shinde has very comfortably breezed past that trust vote uh, which which was much in contention whether whether his whether rebel camp mlas who are with him will cross vote and they will vote in favor of uh, udhav thakre all that was said but ultimately 
99 people only voted against uh, Eknath Shinde. The rest, he's got almost 164 odd votes in his favor. So it's, it's come as a huge victory for Eknath Shinde. After the trust vote, we heard Devendra Fadnavis speaking in a very emotional speech where, of course, you remember, you do remember that Devendra Fadnavis was supposed to be CM and then there was a whole twist of uh, events, literally last minute on Thursday. Uh, and that's when uh, Eknath Shinde was announced as CM and they quickly took oath as well. Uh, he is CM, uh, Devendra Fadnavis is deputy. So the talk was that BJP High Command wanted to, of course, uh, rope in the trust and faith of the people of Maharashtra. Because this, I remember at the end of it, whatever said and done, the BJP might say all it wishes that this was the people's mandate, etc. Not e Citizens don't really usually welcome this kind of coup or the government falling right in the middle of the tenure because governance is put in the back burner. There's really no work that happens on ground. People's issues are completely ignored. Money, public money is being wasted on these resort politics. So really no citizen would be appreciate this kind of, uh, you know, a, a, an attempt to topple a government or, uh, or, or a coup or uh, defections for that matter, people moving from one party to the, uh, to the other. As much as they, uh, maybe not speaking much about it, they, it's not a very pleasant affair for people, for the Am Janta, those who vote. So it's uh, obviously, you know, upsetting for the people of Maharashtra at this point, whether they wanted the BJP um, and Shiv Sena right from the start or not was a different scenario. But since Mahavikas Aghadi was already halfway through the tenure, the fact that the government collapsed and everybody knows the BJP was backing it entirely, backing Eknath Chinde and the rebel camp to carry on their 11-day long rebel rebellion, moving from one resort to the other, <laughs> that private jet after private jet, the kind of money that was spent, you know. So clearly people know and, f and understand that this was, this was certainly the BJP's interest in it as well. And why not? I mean, of course, if if there's a void in a in a government, the the per, the next best person will try to fill that void, and BJP was trying to do just that to take that opportunity and strike where the void was. So uh, they they now back in power, but of course the reason to why Ekna Shinde was chosen as chief minister was to try and build trust uh, uh, among the people of Maharashtra and particularly among the grassroots cadre of the Shiv Sena, so that the rebel camp also have ex, uh, you know immense faith in Ekna Shinde and him guiding them. Uh, <clears throat> because at the end of it, Udav Thakre is a Thakre. Uh, he is Bal Thakre's son. At the end of it, no matter what, uh, you know, people who have a great appreciation and love and uh, idolize Bal Thakre will eventually look at his son as the rightful heir to his legacy. So, uh, how would you really change that and sort of sensitize people to Eknath Shinde? Maybe making him the chief minister was the right choice. So that's what we believe that BJP has done, uh, as per our, in, in, you know, our political experts as well. This is how they look at it. But yeah, so two MLAs at right towards the fag end of the trust vote, uh, just when the trust vote was beginning, left, ditched Udhav Thakre and uh, joined Eknath Shinde. So that, of course, has come as an embarrassment. But Fadnavis uh, finally took took away uh, the the cake with the trust vote. He won the trust vote with Eknath Shinde's help. He's he gave a big speech about how Eknath Shinde is an amazing man, a very pleasant, simple personality, and has worked so hard for the people on ground. Gave uh, these, uh, you know, gave many idioms and uh, you know, examples of how Eknath Shinde is the right person to lead the state of Maharashtra, etc. So basically, it was a very interesting uh, take by Devendra Fadnavis, ex almost uh, glorifying Eknath Shinde on the floor of the house right after the trust vote today. So, yeah, that's what we saw. Now, Maharashtra is governed by the BJP and the Shiv Sena. Now, a quick word while we're speaking of Maharashtra. Uh, the, uh, w w in fact, India Today was tracking these developments on that Amravati murder. So, basically, one man put up a post in Amravati, put up a post in support of Nupur Sharma, of what she said about Prophet Muhammad. And one man who was part of his WhatsApp group, a Muslim man, uh, is said to have initiated and orchestrated his murder. This is what we hear. So uh, while that case is being probed right now, there were many calls that were made, threat calls to many people who were known to the Umesh. Umesh was the man who was murdered, Namravati. Many people who were known to Umesh, they got threat calls from many other uh, Islamists, extreme, uh, ex uh, many other extremists. Uh, from Islam who apparently called them and threatened them that if you don't put up an apology post now for what you for, for supporting Nupur Sharma then we will slit your throat. These are the kind of threat calls that, that came in the way of many of these men for putting up a post on their social media status and WhatsApps 
just just saying I support Nupur Sharma. That's all that they did, and that's it. Uh, uh, we saw Omesh got murdered, and uh, we hear that there were threat calls, many of them that were made. Now, what was all the more disappointing is that the police in Amravati, all along when Omesh was killed, his throat was slit, never revealed that the murder was over Nupur Sharma's post and someone supporting him. They tried to brush it off as if it was threat, uh, it was some kind of theft, etc. They didn't really reveal that and make make that uh, public unless until uh, the family of Omesh really tried to find the real reason and then this was brought up and then the the police, uh, in fact, in Amravati finally declared, when, when this investigation was taken to higher authorities, then she declared that, yeah, it could be because of some Hindu-Muslim clash, because of something that Nupur said, someone supported, and it, it appears that that's why he was killed. So uh, one is saying, and people are observing, that if at all Amravati case had come up earlier, if had the police really declared it that this was the case where this man, this man was killed because he said something about uh, Nupur Sharma in support of her, then maybe, just maybe, weeks later, Kanhayala's murder could have been avoided. That, that, that would have been, could have been curbed. If media attention falls on any show, obviously the police become uh, highly sensitive and it, it really helps with cracking down on these unscrupulous uh, antisocial elements. So yeah, the, the, the fact that the police tried to, you know, keep, keep this matter subdued is uh, a lot, questions being raised about the intent of the police. Now whether she was really, the, the police department there in Amravati were really trying to not create panic and not really give any legitimacy to these, you know, criminals, uh, these Islamists. Not to show what the real intent was, or maybe at that point just to save the Mahavikas Aghadi's uh, collapse. At that point, because uh, Mahavikas Aghadi government was right in the brink of collapse, there was a lot of rebellion. So maybe he, they just withheld this information not to add to the chaos. We don't know what the reason is, but this is what really happened, and that, and you know, I really not appreciated. Uh, what, what the police did is not has not come gone down well with people saying that this was the police's attempt to cover it up. Had that information come out, had the police really informed uh, the, the family and uh, the media extensively that this was an attack on the man, he was his throat was slit only because he supported Nupur Sharma, then the case would have de been dealt with in a different way. Maybe NIA coming in, they, they, NIA anyway has now come in and they've taken up the case. So now all these threat calls that were made, all that is also going to be probed into. So uh, any religion, <coughs> one is you don't take up religion, you, you don't take up law into your own hands, even if it is a remark made against your religion. That's, that's the least common sense that one should have. I just hope that common sense really prevails. On that note, thank you very much for watching.